Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to customize some really ordinary white face masks that you can get at any um, department store with your ink tense blocks. You can also use the ink tense pan paints and the ink tense pencils. Whatever you have is totally fine because you're going to see you're going to get a very soft watercolor look no matter um, <clears throat> no matter what you use. And I'm just going to use the blocks because this one product will do it all. So I'm going to set these aside. And the first thing you want to do before you begin is you want to cut down a piece of cardboard or styrofoam packaging to be the same size size as your masks. So you get five in a package. I think this cost around $7 or $8 at Walmart. And um, these actually have the nose wires in them, which is kind of nice because the first Hanes ones I bought at the beginning of the pandemic did not. Um, they do have a front side and a back side. It's up to you which side you want to use. I use the ones without the seam showing as my front side, but like I said, it's up to you. And I had purchased cucumbers the other day and they had they came in a foam they had foam backing on them so I just cut that out to fit my mask so if you can see you just want it a little bit you just want it so that when you stretch your mask over it there's going to be a little bit of tension and it's going to keep the fabric flat cardboard is going to be fine for this but the styrofoam will hold up to water which is nice so I'm just going to stretch that over like that and then you're going to wet the mask and I like to use a spray bottle a spray bottle for that, like the type you would use for like a, you know, for plants. Now the wetter the mask, the more your paint's going to flow. So that's why I said you can use the pencils for this because it'll still flow. It'll still, you know, get nice and uh, get nice and blended and give you that really pretty effortless watercolor look. Um, I did one mask, like the, the first time I tried this, I used the Intense and I stamped and I spent like three hours on a mask and I was like, well, this is nice and all, but we got to do something that's a little bit more time effective, I think. So I just have my tray of Intense blocks. You do not need this many. This is what I have. And we're going to start off by doing one simple flower. And I'm just going to choose a color that I like. I'm very partial to kind of like uh, pinkish reds. So I'm going to start. Well, I can zoom in. We don't need to. You don't need to see my full trays because you can use whatever color you want. You know what an intense block looks like. We're going to, sorry for the jiggle. We are going to just start with the center of the flower. Actually, in the center of the flower, let's do a little bit of yellow. Oh, I had a little green on the edge of that. You want to be careful that you don't. If that bothers you, it doesn't really bother me. It's going to be fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start making these little kind of like uh, sketchy, curvy lines. We're basically just, we start with a spot of yellow in the middle and we're just making um, curves. Now to have a wider, if you want to have a wider petal, what you can do, and I know this freaks some people out, but don't let it bother you, break off a piece. That's not going to hurt anything. They're still going to work. If you got some and you had broken sticks, don't fret. They'll actually work a lot better. Now look at this. I get these nice, bodacious, really thick petals that way. Now because we have the water on the mask, that's activating and locking that ink into the cloth, and that's what you want. Now um, you could even just wash these with like uh, your, your uh, detergent, your detergent and water and wring them out really good and get going. You don't have to wait for them to dry. Now I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> I did not do the best practices here. I didn't wash these, I was excited to use them. So I'm using them right out of the, uh, right out of the package, but I do recommend that you wash them with detergent first, but you don't have to really wait because you could use them damp. Not sopping wet, but, um, but damp. So the thing you need to know about ink tents is that they're only going to be permanent once you get them wet. Okay, so if you think that you might have some dry, um, some dry chunks on there, you want to go in and just kind of wet them down. And I recommend using a stiffer brush like this. You don't need to use fabric medium. You don't need to use anything else with this. And in fact, I would caution you, caution you not to use anything else because this is something that's going to, go, going to go over your mouth and you're going to breathe through. So you probably don't want to have a bunch of, um, you know, a bunch of other chemicals there. These, um, you're going to wash these and it's just going to be like the dye in any fabric that you have. Now I want to have a little texture in the center. I think I'll take, um, let's take a brown, kind of like a brownish color block. Let's do some little dabs for maybe some pollen. You can be really fantastical and freeform with this. Have fun, you know, I mean really, that's the name of the game. Somebody's going to see you out doing your grocery shopping and they're going to be like, that's a fun person right there. I can tell because I can tell by their mask. So we're going to just going to draw, I like this color so I'm going to fill it in, we're going to draw some little, 
some little leaves. You may have to use your fingers to kind of smooth the bumps out in your fabric while you're drawing on them. Look how pretty and sweet that is. This is like literally taking us minutes. This would be a really fun activity, I think, if like you had a, if you were a school teacher, you could ask the parents to send. Now you could just do that, or you can add more leaves around, um, or you could add other little little buds around. Um, like let's say we want to do buds, we could do like a little stem, and then we could go back to our original color. I'm just gonna set that there so I don't forget what color I used, and I could add some little buds. Or I could go with a whole other color if I wanted to. Now since I did it over here, I feel like I might do some over here as well. When in doubt, just keep repeating the same colors. And we'll go back to our stem. Right now we've used four colors. Okay, we haven't used a lot. Put another little, little leaf over there. Remember we're gonna we use our fingers to just make sure your fingers are clean. Because if you have any of that ink tents on your finger, you're gonna you're gonna smudge it, and it's very easy. So actually, doing this with a pencil might be a bit better because your fingers will stay clean. And I'm getting little smudges. Hopefully, those little smudges will won't be locked down, and they'll they'll wash out all right. Now, see what's happening at the edges. See how we're, it's kind of blending out, and you're getting a little bit of a soft look. That's fine. I think that's pretty. So don't try to over control it. This is. Um, if you want to have more control, you could, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because I have a feeling I'm gonna just keep pulling it out of the frame. Um, if you wanna have a little more control, then you can you know, go in with a fine tip brush, you can pick up the paint, the pigment with a fine tip brush from the stick and you can go in and paint it like that. But I think this is a really fun way to do it and um, I think the results are really just soft and pretty and just so lovely. Now let's say you want a little more definition on the leaves. What you can do is go in with your dry stick and you can pick um, like a darker green or a blue, and like you can put a vein in the center. You can put other veins if you want to. You can go in with pencils and do that too. That would be really easy with a pencil. And you can outline that if you want to, if you want to have a stronger, um, if you want to have a stronger outline, that would be really pretty. But I think this is really nice just the way it is. So I am going to just leave that as is and let it dry. So after it dries, what I would do is I would fill my sink up with some um, warm water and some detergent and I would wash it just with my like, you know, regular laundry detergent and rinse it out really good with cold water. And then I would just let it air dry and you're all set to use it. And then um, probably the first couple of washes, I'd wash it with my dark stuff. After that, it really doesn't matter. Um, it should be just fine. Actually, it should be fine after that first wash, but just for a little extra, um, a little extra safety. Now, if you have fabric markers, after this is dry, if you really want to sharpen up your details, if you take fabric markers, then you can go in and you can outline stuff, you can add little details. That will work great as well. So just keep, stick with your fabric stuff and you're going to be fine. Now let's do another one. We'll do one with some, with multiple flowers. Let me make sure I have the right side out. This could be also a fun way if you struggle to get your children to wear masks, if you can let them decorate their own, that might make them a lot more um, a lot more apt to want to wear masks. Of course, probably by now they're all used to it, but if you have, you know, kids are a little more reluctant, then, um, then this could help them get a little more excited about it, especially if they can like maybe draw a picture of their favorite superhero or something. Now you don't have to wet the mask first if you want to use your um, you want to use your intense like paints, like wet your brush and paint with them, you do not need to wet it first. But since I'm drawing with a stick, I want to make sure that my intense is going to lock down so I want my fabric to be wet. Or I'd have to paint over it with, with water to get it to, uh, to lock down. So completely up to you. Totally up to you. But if you don't get this, if you don't get it wet, it's not going to be, it's not going to be permanent. So let's see, what should we do for this one? Um, I do love roses, but I think I'll do some different colors this time, like I did on my other sample. Uh, let's start with, um, how about we do some blue roses? Maybe um, this teal is pretty. Let me do one in this teal. How about we do something that's a little bit more fanciful here? That's kind of cute. I like that. Um, 
Maybe we could do maybe a, bud, a couple buds over here. We'll make them a little bit bigger like that. Really, the sky's the limit. Don't, don't feel like it has to look like any flower you've ever seen before. It can be completely, um, completely from your imagination. I really like that green that we used originally, and I like that dark. I think I'll start off with the dark. Enough with that. I'm just making this up. I haven't really, um, I thought I would do, I, when I was looking at the other ones that I did though, I did this pretty much the same technique but on two masks, so just with different flowers. So I'm like, let's do something different here. Let's give it a couple little leaves. Let's do, maybe we'll do a little, um, let's do a little purple rose. Why not? That'll be kind of cute. I tend to go for the darker colors because um, they'll stain a little bit better and they'll be, you know, they'll resist fading over more washes. The, the fading you'll get, you'll probably get the most fading in your first wash and after that it won't fade really very much. That's kind of pretty. And then, um, ooh, I kind of want some pink in there too. Let's see, and maybe some yellow. Some yellow would be really pretty. We're getting a really pretty um, halo of color there. I really like that. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow for the center of that flower. Now, I don't wanna put yellow in the middle of the purple flower because if I do that, we're gonna end up with brown because yellow and purple make brown, but Let's do kind of maybe a little bit of plum color in there. That would be really pretty. Now, if I thought, oh, I want a softer color, what I could do is I could take my brush and I could, uh, I don't know if you can, can you see that? I could just pick it up like that, just like I do with the Intense Pans. And I could go in and I could say, oh, I'm gonna, just gonna brush some of that in there. And it looks really dark when it's wet, but it's going to dry lighter. And if you want to soften anything out or spread that color more, just go with water on your brush. And I would recommend like a Taclon brush or a nylon brush, something that doesn't hold a ton of water. I wouldn't use your watercolor brushes because it's just kind of rough to, to be using those on fabric like this. Like I'd want just a little soft blush over there so I could even use that same color and just put it on really lightly, or I could just go with a totally lighter color. Like I think this is a little bit lighter, even though it looks dark. It's lighter than the one I drew with. But stay really within the lines when you do this because it is gonna spread more when you're going with a wet, um, a wet brush like this. And I don't have it too wet. You can see how the bristles are spread apart. I don't have the brush too wet. I just have it wet enough. Now I wanna do, I wanna kinda of fill in a little bit. Uh, let's see, I do want some pink. So maybe do, maybe like a little spiky pink flower, like a lupin. And a little bit over here. And we'll do it over here. You always wanna repeat And I'm trying not to overlap my colors too much because I don't want to have, uh, I don't want to have a bunch of mud. Now I like that green that we used at first. I think this was it, wasn't it? So I'm just going to kind of fill in a little bit of green. I could even do some little green specks in the center of that flower if I want to. And um, yeah, we'll just let that dry and then wash it. And that's all there is to it. Now I did play around with another idea, but I didn't really like the way it came out. So I kind of abandoned it. Uh, but on this one, I tried using some stencils and I just really thought that that looked worse than just kind of freehanding it and just having fun with, um, with just drawing on the wet masks. When I stenciled, I made sure that the mask was dry and I used the paint with the brush, but I just didn't really like the, um, I didn't like the the process of that. This was so fun to just sketch with the, um, 
with the sticks on the damp masks. So hope you found this fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any of the Intense products, give them a try. So if you're going to use the pan paints though, um, and applying it with the brush is the only way to go, I would leave the mask dry so you have a little more control because you're going to be wetting that paint anyway, so you don't need to wet the masks. Same if you want to use your brush and pick up the color from the... Um, uh, from the pans here. You don't need to pre-wet it. Just pre-wet it if you're going to draw on it with the pencils or the blocks and you are going to be all set. Uh, if you give us a try, let me know. I would love to see it. If you share your masks on Instagram, tag me so I can see them. Um, hey, <laughs> we're still going to wear them, so we might as well look good, right? Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.